good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Welcome to Focus on Liberia. I am your West African correspondent, Edward Amara. Welcome to this all important news update program. We are we inform, we entertain, and we also educate you on events that happen on the continent of Africa. This is a regular program of Focus on Liberia. And the platform uses this particular program to draw Africans very close to the continent where we give them adequate and very careful information on most of the major events that are happening on the continent. Feel free to join the program through dropping your comments in the comment box and let's see how we can make Africa a better place. Once more, I am Edward Amara, focus on Liberia, West African correspondent, based in Kenema City, Eastern Province, Sierra Leone. Today, we are going to have some stories in West Africa. We are going into the southern part of Africa. Then we we'll get to uh, to North Africa, and finally, we also end in East Africa. Welcome, welcome. Feel free, and we value your contribution because they help us a lot. Um, we are going to start in Mali. Mali, the military junta in Mali is accusing the UN of having spies in a territory and at the same time they are responsible for making a defamation claim or an accusation against the Malian junta government that they are responsible for the massacre of civilians. The junta government has condemned the act of UN, an alleged act of UN having spy. We actually violate uh, international independence, sovereignty of a country, their right, because you can't just send somebody to spy on another person without their consent. It's actually it's a violation of their governmental right. However, Mali have actually been proved on several occasions, investigated by independent journalists, and they have come to conclusion on how on time in the numerous, on numerous occasions they have actually tortured civilians kill them, some of them have been buried in mass grave. And the situation of Mali is so pathetic. Since the fall of Amadou Toumani Touré, Abu Bakar Keita came in, we have seen junta government, one military coup d'etat into another. And unfortunately, the, the trial rebels that we are seeing to Mali, who are actually fighting the created insurgents, they are Malians. And, and having submitted that, as long as they are Malians, there is a possibility that the junta government is also accusing some of the citizens of being responsible for hosting these rebels. And most of the areas where the rebels attack, they have their folks, they have their siblings, they have relatives around there. But that doesn't mean that they are actually responsible for the havoc being caused by these so-called uh, social rebels or insurgents. So, if the Malian government is now making a kind of repressive attack, it is like misdirected anger. And most of the civilians have been raped, they have been killed. They can want this normally set tough precedent to ensure that those who are supporting the jihadist movement against the junta government will see bitter but brighter examples so that they will never intend to host, support, or pamper these people and those civilians who found themselves within the zone, the territory where this particular jihadist movement was being created, where they have those trial rebels, are now also being accused of being sympathizers or apologies of the movement. That is why the junta government normally carry on some stringent, if not hard, tough measures in man handle these people. So the UN is now accusing Mali, essentially, and it war Russia counterparts, foreign troops, of being responsible for the massacre, rape, and killing of civilians. They have condemned the act and have asked UN to apologize unconditionally. We are yet to see the response from UN, and they think and feel that 
the UN is scrutinizing them with the notion of lambast nibler reprimanding or trying to tarnish their reputation globally. They promise to maintain peace and sanity and hope that by 2024 uh, they will conduct a free and fair election, a free and fair election where a civilian government will be elected. But unfortunately in Mali, irrespective of a civilian government that comes into power, as long as you do not have the support of the military, you tend not to live long in power. Reason being, Mali is already fighting war, and most of the economy of Mali is being invested into the military. And if you cannot have the maximum support of the military, they can either overthrow you or incite the populace against your person through full fresh demonstration where you will definitely leave. So the Malian government is now calling on UN to refrain from their act and also to ensure that uh, an apology is being given because of what happened. But we pray and hope that the situation will not escalate as being feared and it has been so since the overthrow of Amadou, I mean of Abu Bakr Keita, popularly known as IBK in 2020. That come, rival Libyan government released MP with his colleague, replaces MP with his colleague. In Libya, since the fall of Muammar Gaddafi, Libya has never tasted peace. The country has been thrown into military faction, like uh, General Kaifad has on numerous occasions threatened to take over Tripoli. People have been killed. Some people have been raped. The economy has been relegated. Some black Africans have been tortured, especially when the area is being used as a transit point for youth who are heading overseas. Those who, like in Sri Lanka, they call them uh, the temp run. It's a very tough run where people live for survival. Then uh, they are actually accusing the SAC Prime Minister of being unable to unify the government or the, the state, he said, they actually created the situation to ensure that uh, a Prime Minister who has the maximum power, maybe no legibility to solve the current political crisis into Libya. They accused the former Prime Minister of being a weakling who was not able to bring into effect what he was actually being uh, elected for. They have, they have replaced him with his former finance minister and have also charged him with the responsibility to ensure that Libya is being brought together. The problem of arms smuggling, torture of civilians, political rivalry in terms of fighting, they should have at least a one centrally placed government that regulates the other bodies. Unfortunately, Libya is divided into faction, and certain people are even having clan militia. The central government is not that powerful because it is not, the power is not being disseminated to other local levels. That situation has compounded the situation, uh, have compounded the entire problem into the country. And as I speak, Libya has a very fragile peace, and a lot of people have been have been killed in the country on a daily basis. Our African brothers who are heading overseas through the through through North Africa actually be detained into Libya, killed, some of them are tortured, raped, and done into a different other way. So we are hoping, praying, and wishing that things like that should not continue to happen. Then let's come to, we are going to take the second, uh, the third news, Africa pushing for Russia and Ukraine peace. Fantastic. Fantastic. So good. I'm impressed. It's superb. It's excellent. It's incredible. And we pray and hope that maybe Africa can set a peculiar precedent, a peculiar precedent that uh, what the West is unable to achieve, let Africa do it. And I personally do admire the stand of Syria Mafosa, the president of South Africa, who has did not condemn nor praise Russia for her attack on Ukraine. They are only taken 
what an independent stand. We let me just go through the news for you. Six African leaders are to travel to Russia and Ukraine in a bid to find an end to the conflict. South Africa's president has announced. Sarah Maposa said he held separate phone calls over the weekend with his Russia and Ukraine counterparts. Both Russia's Vladimir Putin and Ukraine leader Vladimir Zelensky had agreed to the plan, he said. Principal to our discussions are effort to find a peaceful resolution to the devastating conflict in Ukraine. It cost him a life and impact on the African economy, Mr. Cyril Makosa said. I presented the initiative on behalf of African head of state from Zambia, Senegal, Congo, Uganda, Egypt, and South Africa. It is not clear whether he was referring to Congo, Brazzaville, or the Democratic Republic of Congo. The two leaders agreed to receive the mission of the African heads of state in both Moscow and Kiev. The South African leaders said, adding that the UN chief had been briefed and welcomed the African initiative. Mr. Sira Mafusa's comment made in Cape Town during the visit of Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Hissin Loon come as senior South African militia officers are visiting. The South African leader uh, has reiterated that South Africa will not side over the war in Ukraine. This follows the diplomatic row and erupted that erupted last week when U.S. ambassador to South Africa accused the country of secretly providing arms and ammunition to Russia. Mr. Raposa has agreed to investigate the claim, but there is no concrete evidence to support the allegations. Fantastic initiative from Africa and the hope to find peace. We are praying and hoping that maybe what the world has not been able to achieve, Africa on our own we do a marvelous job to ensure that there is peace, there is sanity, there is sanity and Ukraine should be free from a political shambles. It's a shame and we are seeing a lot of things that happen and the act is becoming a symbolic thing for the entire world. Then we come, same sex marriage is held abroad recognized in Namibia. We all know Africa about our mentality, how religious we are, it's the same stupidity that have led to the killing of over 210 civilians in, or, or people in Kenya when a cult leader announced that let people starve to death so that they can meet their maker Jesus Christ and by so doing they will live a comfortable life in, he in heaven and he has never been there nobody has been there who came back and he persuaded those people to starve themselves some of them we are killed some of them we are strangulated to death some die out of suffocation while die, some die out of starvation now in Namibia, a Southern African country, now same-sex marriage has been recognized. But the synergy about the entire thing is that it is not legal to organize a same-sex marriage in Namibia. However, should couples married abroad and they come into Namibia, they are claiming that they are free to live. So indirectly, it's like partially recognizing gays and lesbian right into Namibia. But they do not have the right to conduct the very act into Namibia for fear of being influenced. The statement from Winkhawk said, "The gay rights and other the gay activists and other human rights activists activists have welcomed the idea, praised the government, and they are pushing now to ensure that also gays and lesbian or same-sex or homosexual marriages are being encouraged to happen on the soil of Namibia." But as it stands. If you want to live as a gay and a lesbian in Namibia, you can go and do your marriage abroad and come back on the continent. You are free to live. Finally, Kenya officials suck for mosquito net scam. We all know Africa is so corrupt, so unscrupulous, some of our leaders. The permanent secretary of that particular Ministry of Health and Sanitation in Kenya has actually been sacked because of they have been accused of making way of 27 million dollars that was actually sent by the global health fund is the kind of body that is responsible for the treatment of malaria and they normally give what they call itn uh, 
printed those things when they when they submit those things they have created the issue and those issues is are now compounding so what they have decided is like uh, they should investigate the case and because previously the namibian government i mean have been actually accused previously i mean the the, the, uh, the kenyan government has actually been accused of siphoning funds given to the health unit we are those spawn we are actually meant to prevent malaria and they said the money given was actually meant for poor areas we are uh, economic hardship is definitely fed those uh, permanently treated bed nets can be given to nurses i mean to nurses or, or hospital staff those hospital staff will in turn distribute it to the people within the community through felt means so they have accused them of even favoring the company to win a contract for the supply of the ITNs, which was unscrupulously done. And the board of the particular uh, foundation have also been disbanded. Investigation is going on, and they are asking the Kenyan government to fully respond and ensure that they restore what uh, the bed net that we have been stolen should be recovered, and everybody who was responsible should be prosecuted. That is the news in Kenya. And also in Kenya, we are seeing the court leader is also was also being tried today. A lot of revolutions we are being given. And there is possibility that over six hundred people whose body who, who who are missing for now could probably be dead. Then in Sudan, even though there is peace talk going on. Uh, the capital city Khartoum is still being under attack. There is internet cut out or blackout, light blackout, and the same time women have been raped, civilians have been killed, and other army bases have been attacked. And both war and fashion are vowing to make arrest of either of the leaders, and they will fail prosecution, public prosecution, after everything might have been successfully done. Thank you very much. It's been me, Edward. I'm a focus on Liberia, West African correspondent, coming to you with the latest news headlines and analysis on the continent of Africa. To end the news, the headlines once more. Mali accuses UN of spying and reject massacre report. Accuses UN of spying and reject massacre report. Rival Libya government replaces PN with his colleague in Africa pushing Russia. Ukraine peace plan. Same sex marriages held abroad recognized in Namibia. Same sex marriage held abroad recognized in Namibia. And finally, Kenya official sack for mosquito bed net scanner. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow, same time, same place. It's been me, Edward Amaro, focus on Liberia.